Hi, this is Tony. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays the Body It Does. And I'm just downwind. Oh, God, it smells amazing. From the rest stop, all right, they got the vault toilets down there on Highway 281 in South Texas. And I was dismayed to find that someone had actually stuffed a full hairpiece in one of the toilets. They got a full hairpiece in one of the tubes. Regardless, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this underappreciated sage, this underappreciated member of the Salvia family from South Texas. Let's check it out. Right there, you can see we got Salvia Bellata Flora. See that, those beautiful purple flowers. Looks like the leaves are getting murked by uh, leaf miners or some sort of insect. Regardless, this thing is in full flower because the temperatures, the daytime temperatures finally did drop below 95. But you can see, especially up there, you just got these these tapestries of calices, spent uh, spent uh, uh, arrangements of fused sepals, because that's all a calyx is. You got the blue corolla and the fused sepals forming the calyx. And inside those calices, calyx singular, you got uh, two to four seeds. And so, uh, you know, they, they tend to dump out when they're done. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a couple branches of these, all right, looking for ones that are mostly done flowering, uh, put them in a paper bag, a paper sack, if you will, and let them uh, let them dry out and dehiss on their own. And there'll be a couple little seeds inside because this thing needs to be grown more. Look at those beautiful landing pads for the pollinators. Now the leaves on this species, on this individual, actually are getting murked by some sort of insect. Uh, you could see ants crawling around, probably mining aphids on it too. But it does smell amazing. It doesn't affect the smell. There's plants that look much healthier. Uh, behind me and uh, you know you got it in a garden cultivation it'll do real well right fucking banger plant gets upwards of four feet tall max and just covered in flowers especially if it's in a garden you irrigate it just throw some water on it once in a while salvia bellata flora everybody and right here we got a uh, black brush acacia such a keystone plant okay foundation and ecosystem not an acacia anymore it's been placed in the genus vichelia they can get upwards of about 15 feet tall they are covered in spines but when they're going off in the spring just covered in these yellow powder puff flowers you could smell them from 30 freaking feet away just a great fucking plant and again you know once they get big enough you get all these cool cacti including peyote and star cactus growing beneath them enjoying the shade because it's just too fucking hot to grow here uh in full summer full exposed but that plant can take it and right here with this devaricate branching this zigzag branching who knows what that's an adaptation to probably some sort of herbivory uh, this is a Colubrina Texensis, member of the Buckthorn family. Almost looks like a really cool plant. Another really cool plant we get down here, Prunus Texensis. The Texas uh, plum, or peach, or almond, whatever the shit you want to call it. Same genus, Prunus. But uh, this, of course, once you see the fruits, they got those three carpels on them. Or the uh, Buckthorn family. The, the Vericat branching is really cool. Another cool shrub gets upwards of six feet tall, maybe a little bit taller. See, here we go. Here's those dried fruits. See the, the mealy part, the flesh is all brown. And then you look at it and you got those three segments. But inside those little beige nutlets, you got the actual seed. So I'm gonna crack that open, take this home and grow a few. Now stepping over here, oh look, we got a nice Ganoderma. What is that, uh, growing on the black brush, on an old stump of black brush, that's nice. Now stepping over here, you can see, oh we got the Widelia, Widelia hispida, cause it's hispid, got a couple beetles uh, making love sensual passionate love inside that capitulum but note the opposite heads and a very scabbard all right like sandpaper all right hispid and you got uh, these nice ruellias over here ruellia is an acanthaceae the family acanthaceae beautiful beautiful flower look at the, that white pubescence on there see that and you got those opposite leaves because they are in order lamiales the order of sages okay but uh, many of these are pollinated by moths at night, thus the long tubular uh, flowers. So moths are butterflies, all right? Got a long tube in there. They're growing close to the ground and uh, seem to be, uh, you know, a lot of them flower at night. Uh, some looks like they're wrapping up, but uh, you know, they're obviously going for, uh, for butterflies too, which are just the daytime, you know, the more cheery moths, right? Look at this member of the olive family right here, Menadora. This is Menadora, I think it's Heterophylla. Look at those opposite leaves, also in Lamiales. The olive family is also in the order of sages, Lamiales. So you got those opposite leaves and, uh, you know, but of course, that's not a standby. Not everything with opposite leaves in that, that order, but it's a good giveaway. All right, coffee family, Rubiaceae also has opposite leaves and they're not in Lamiales. But regardless, there's that flower, okay? Kind of got a tube thing going on. Look at the calyx. 
those sepals, those long ass, uh, actually that's not even, are those just di divided bricks or what's going on there? Not all those are sepals. Maybe it's one sepal that's got the, you know, divided up into a few. Regardless, there you go. Nice flower. Wonder what pollinates it. Probably some sort of bee. And uh, look at the sexy parts inside. How many stamens you got in there? Two stamens. Should be two more maybe. I don't know. Anyway, uh, and you got a very uh, bizarre looking stigma. But look at those dissected leaves. And it's just creeping on the ground. Menador is a big genus. There's some perennial shrubs. Some are annuals. Some are just... Uh, some are just herbaceous perennials, etc. But regardless, there's a there's an abutilon. Here's another abutilon. Probably how many fucking species of abutilon you got in Texas? Way too many. You got a fucking lot of them, that's for sure. Look at that. This is all Salvia bellata flora. Such a fucking great plant. Not grown enough. Look at those empty calices where the flowers once were. All right, crack some of those open. You're gonna find one or two seeds inside. The ones I've been finding have only had one seed in it, and it's still green. That's why you get them now, because right when they, you know, when they do mature, it just opens and they drop right out. All right, but I imagine birds probably go for some of the seeds too. Of course, you know, salvia is chia, right? Like salvia seeds are chia. Chia, as in chia pet, is just salvia. What is it? The Hispanica, or what? I forget the fucking name of it. Who knows? Anyway, well, we'll wrap that up right there. Ooh, verbicina. That's a nice one pioneer plant but it can be really aggressive verbicina and celioides anyway that's all i got have a great day go fuck yourself bye